Dark Horse has become one of the greatest binge-worthy series streaming on Netflix. Featuring the rise and fall of drug cartels, it is thrilling and intriguing at the same time. Don't you often wish to know some of the characters more after watching the series? Well then, let's not waste time and take a look at the top 10 Narcos characters. No, sorry. Starting off the list, we have Steve Murphy, the DEA agent who stood up against the biggest drug lord of all time. He worked alongside Javier Pena to bring down Pablo Escobar's empire of drugs. Steve was assigned to Miami initially where he worked with Kevin Brady. Kevin was killed by one of the Sicarios of the Medellin Cartel. From that moment onwards, Steve made it a personal quest to bring down this drug lord. If we're going to be partners, I don't get left behind. I didn't come all the way down here, Penny, sit on the fucking sidelines. And the best part is, he did succeed in it. Steve and his wife had to go through a lot of trouble because of his profession, but they were adamant. You're a cop. Not a cop, actually. I'm a DA. Pena and Steve were responsible for the eviction of Pablo from Congress, completely devastating his political career. A man of action, and he doesn't take even a little pride in it. <laughs> Next up, we have Navigante. How bad do you want this How far are you willing to go in this matter? He was a hitman who worked for the Cali cartel, but that's not quite the end of the importance of his character. Navigante was a trusted and loyal member of the Cali cartel. He was sent to the Medellin cartel during the Medellin Cali wartime. He infiltrated Pablo's association and was responsible for the deaths of the founders of the Medellin cartel. He turned in gotcha to DEA agent Javier Pena. So here's the thing, even though Navigante was a member of the Cali cartel, he was of utmost help to the DEA in their mission to hunt down the narco traffickers. Eventually he was shot. Karma went full circle on him you can say. Next up we have Jose Gonzalo Rodriguez Gacha. An overly loving father, love for sombreros and tequila, and reckless killing of people is what characterizes this person. Popularly known as El Mexicano or the Mexican, he was one of the key players in the drug trade and formation of the Medellin cartel. He even got involved in emerald trading at some point in his life. He's one character who was not afraid of killing people. Have you ever said to your friend that you'd kill him if he didn't know you? Well, Gotcha took this way too seriously. And he pampered and spoiled his son to a point that he even ignored his son's tendency for sexual violence. He had a great affinity towards weapons and even missiles. He even successfully tested a rocket launcher. Wow, now that's a whole new level of dangerous. At number 7, we have the youngest core member of the Cali Cartel, Helmer Pacho Herrera. He was an open personal enemy of Pablo Escobar. Helmer Pacho Herrera was one of the four godfathers of the Cali Cartel. An openly gay and physically fit, confident young boy, he started with working as a precious jewel and metal broker. This was until he decided to make more money. He went to Colombia and asked for drug distribution rights in Mexico and New York on the path that he had previously established. Soon, he became a Cali leader. A war broke out between the Medellin Cartel and Cali Cartel over drug distribution in Los Angeles. Soon, Escobar started seeing Herrera as his personal enemy and ordered shootouts to kill him, but to no avail. Pablo even agreed to a truce between the cartels demanding prosecution of Helmer. This enmity eventually led to Helmer giving out information about Gaviria, thus ruining the reign of Pablo Escobar. At number 6, we have a friendly drug lord. Doesn't ring a bell quite yet? Miguel Orihuela took over the functioning of the Cali cartel after his brother was arrested. He was also known as Don Miguel. What's interesting about this character is his actual personality. He's known for his affable nature and good character. Quite a contradiction to an image of a drug lord, no? His personal qualities were used by him to make useful connections everywhere, infiltrating all walks of professions. From white-collar thugs to Colombian government, his connections penetrated deep, which made it difficult for anyone to catch him. What's laudable about him is his keen interest in analyzing criminal norms, which he used to reduce the sentences of the members of his cartel who served. He actually sued the defense minister for not respecting his rights. And he has successfully been able to run away from the police and has even escaped death several times. Sounds like quite the man. Next up, we have Gustavo Gaviria. Growing up together, Gustavo and Pablo were closer than brothers. 
they ventured out on this illegal method of earning money together. Gaviria was the financial head of the Menelin cartel, but there was more to it. What makes his character really interesting is the actual story. Gaviria and Escobar did great, terrible things together. The brain behind raising the cocaine sale all over the world was actually Gustavo's. He would plan everything so creatively and intricately that he couldn't be caught easily. He came up with ideas of hiding the drugs inside TV sets and refrigerators and transporting them in legitimate chips. Not only this, but goods from Latin American countries including cocoa and dried fish were also used for drug transport. Gustavo was even tempered and dealt with the Sicarios at times. Gaviria laid low and kept the business smoothly moving to reach glory in no time. His death marked the downfall of the entire cartel. With the brains vanished, Pablo didn't last long. And number four, we have Colonel Horacio Carrillo. Yo sé que estás cagado del susto de que Pablo te mate. Pero yo también te voy a matar. Even though Narcos is based on true events and stories, the writers of the show have taken the liberty of fictionalizing some characters and have succeeded quite well. Number four has that fictional officer that Escobar himself feared. Carrillo's character is based on two men who hunted Escobar in real life, Jaime Ramirez Gomez and Hugo Martinez. Carrillo is one of the most interesting, smart, brave, and badass characters in Narcos. He headed the search block and was a key player in the mission of finding Escobar and other dangerous people like him. He led the raids and even killed Gacha and Gustavo Gaviria. What's fascinating about his character is his fearlessness and confidence. The best part was his tit-for-tat way of working. Pablo's associates never believed in negotiation and peaceful resolution, so he went on mercilessly killing cops and other people who came in their way. Carrillo did the same with these cartels, hanging criminals up, defying the CIA, chasing gangsters like rabid dogs and throwing people out of the helicopter are his best moments. Well, Carrillo even threatened the drug lord himself by telling him that he knows the whereabouts of his entire family. With Pablo Escobar dead, there had to be someone to take advantage of the void created in the drug world. Yes, we're talking about Chepe Santa Cruz Londono, my personal favorite. He was one of the godfathers of the Cali cartel. All the four men looked after different aspects of the cartel, with Londono being the American arm of the cartel. He was called the Man in New York, and he led a life more dramatic than what was shown in the series. Can you even imagine that? <laughs> Chepe is described to be a colorful person. Possessing an amazing sense of humor and love for science, he was one of the smartest kingpins with intricate money laundering schemes. Pepe Rapazote portrayed Chepe on Narcos Season 3. His amazing acting skills are much appreciated. Maybe Netflix should consider a spin-off about this powerful and intelligent man. In number two, we have a fierce DEA agent who was responsible for the downfall of the great Pablo Escobar himself. My name's Javier Peña, I work for the DEA. Javier Peña, along with Steve Murphy, gathered informants and hunted Pablo down. Peña stated that arresting Escobar was a personal quest for him, an act of revenge for all the cops and innocent lives the Kingpin had taken. Apart from being the reason for the Medellin cartel's downfall, Peña revealed Colombian government corruption as well. He uncovered the connection between the Cali cartel and Colombian politician Ernesto Semper. His announcement stirred the air up in Colombia, as well as the US. Oh, you don't think it was easy, do you? Peña broke many rules and went out of the way to do justice to his post without thinking about his life. Now that's who you should see as an inspirational guy. He resigned from the DEA after the scandalous revelations of his corruption. I've done enough. I'm through. And finally, at number one, we have the greatest drug kingpin of all time, Pablo Escobar. Yo soy Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria. You don't need to have watched Narcos to know about the greatest kingpin of all time, Pablo Escobar. He was downright dangerous and intelligent. Expanding his illegal drug business with his trusted contacts, he was able to put up an army of Sicarios. His violent acts spared no one that came in his way and made him one of the most ruthless men to have ever lived. But there was another side to Pablo Escobar. He loved his daughter and never disrespected his wife in spite of having multiple extramarital affairs, of course. <laughs> and can you guess his biggest fear? Extradition. He said that he'd rather have a grave in Colombia than a jail cell in the US. 
He owned the largest zoo in Latin America and was the seventh richest person in the entire world. <laughs> who would have thought that the son of a farmer and a school teacher would rise to be such a person who terrified the entire world? So that's all for today. Do you know of any more interesting Narcos characters other than the ones mentioned? Let us know down in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and yeah, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon to never miss my new uploads. I'll see you next time on the TV Regent.